our requirement for sugar or glucose from an exogenous source is zero. We don't need any. Our requirement for plant compounds, in my opinion, is absolutely zero because vitamin C can be found in animal proteins. A 12 ounce beef steak contains 12 milligrams of vitamin C, 24 to 25 and 100 grams of beef liver. So my argument there is the plant compounds are not good sources of these vitamins and minerals. Let's look at energy production. How are we doing for time? Oh my goodness. Okay. Let's be, I knew I'd get carried away. Glycolysis. So this is the process where we break down glucose or carbohydrate for sugar. I'm going to explain really quickly what this is. So the glucose, it doesn't seamlessly enter the mitochondria. It needs to enter the cell via transporters, and then it goes through a process called glycolysis, creates pyruvate. This travels through the mitochondrial pyruvate complex, where eventually it becomes acetyl-CoA, and I need you to remember this. Acetyl-CoA goes into the citric acid cycle, this creates ATP. Fantastic. Woo! Okay, what else does it do? As Prof Nox mentioned, these compounds, these carbohydrates, these cereals, they will elicit a number of responses. Obviously, the pancreas will re release insulin. Insulin will upregulate lipoprotein lipase. This bron that breaks the bonds on the glycerol backbone, and it tells the fatty acids to enter the fat cell. This is how we store fat. In short, carbohydrate tell your body to store fat. In order to burn this fat, we need hormone-sensitive lipase to perform this, this, this process in reverse, if you like. The issue with this is when insulin is elevated, it blocks hormone-sensitive lipase. So not only does it tell your body to store fat, it prevents your body from burning that fat. So if you consume your bowl of muesli in the morning in an attempt to fuel your run to burn body fat, you are not burning body fat when insulin is elevated. It's almost biologically impossible. This is a glucose uh, Fisher projection. So when we consume the carbohydrates, they travel through the body in two forms, a cyclical form and a linear form. At the top, the carbon double bond oxygen this is where glycation happens. It goes through a series of, of steps. It, it goes through an amadori reaction. This amadori reaction results in an advanced glycation end product. This advanced glycation end product will bind to receptors on the cell and it will activate two pathways, the NOx pathway, NADPH figures or moxidase, and this will lead to reactive oxygen species. This goes on to damage cells our LDL particles, as well as our DNA, and it will also activate that NFKB, nuclear factor kappa B, which also is activated through the overexpression of the NRF2 pathway. And this, let's come this side, this leads to inflammation. So in short, glucose leads to reactive oxygen species, damages our cells, and it leads to inflammation. This is what excess volumes of carbohydrate will do. Now, insulin resistance, when we consume excessively high levels of exogenous glucose or carbohydrate, it leads to what we call insulin resistance. But insulin resistance doesn't really exist. Now, the cell becomes protective. The, the body doesn't lose its ability to use the insulin. What happens is the GLUT4 transporter translocates into the cell in order to save the cell. The cell is too full. It doesn't want to take any more cargo because if it puts any more in, it's going to start to leak and cause issues. So it tells the, the, the receptor, the GLUT4 receptor, to translocate into the cell. Therefore, the glucose cannot enter the cell. Now, when we look at um, things like metformin, metformin will signal the increase of AMPK, and this forces the translocation of the GLUT4 transporter back to the su surface, forcing that glucose into the cell when it doesn't want it. Your body's telling you that that cell doesn't want it. All we are doing is moving it from the blood to the cell. It's still in the body, but it's causing more harm in the cell than it is in the blood. And that's what happens when we become insulin resistant. So that would be my argument against insulin resistance. But as the terminology of insulin resistance, and we all understand it, I'm going to go along with insulin resistance. So we consume these carbohydrates. It leads to this, this state of insulin resistance. This leads to something called glutamate excitotoxicity, which pushes the glutamate and GABA ratio out of whack. Uh, as Bitten mentioned yesterday, the gluten to, uh, uh, glutamate to GABA ratio is critically important. When we increase one, the other is suppressed. Glutamate is excitatory, and GABA is the calming part of the brain. This leads to things like ALS, MS, anxiety, depression, DNA damage, so on and so forth. So consuming excessively high levels of carbohydrates, in my opinion, are detrimental.